What's up, you guys? This is Kellen from Killing Four Company with my first ever heavy metallurgy album review. So today we are going to be talking about Ranger and the album Risen from the Ruins, released here at the end of 2020 on Exo Records. Um, but before we talk about Ranger, I wanted to first spend a little bit of time talking about speed metal and kind of where it is today. So. Um, there are tons of bands that are right now coming out very much rooted in a kind of 1980s, 1990s revivalism. There are an endless amount of death metal, black metal, and more and more traditional heavy metal bands that are sort of emerging that are deeply rooted in an older sound. Speed metal, and to some degree thrash, kind of fit in an odd place in the genres I just mentioned because both speed and thrash sit in a place, you know, essentially between extreme metal and traditional heavy metal. And um, I think speed metal as a genre has seen less and less interest from newer bands. Uh, you don't see a lot of newer speed metal bands sort of coming to the forefront or um, getting a lot of exposure nowadays. And if you look at kind of history, there's a, a reason for that, right? In that time period, in the early 1980s, sort of as the new wave of British heavy metal started to sort of come down the other side of the mountain, it essentially passed the torch um, to bands like Metallica or other thrash metal bands that were on the rise. So as one sort of fell, that torch got passed to thrash where speed metal kind of got forgotten um, and to some degree is the sort of, while similar to thrash, in history is sort of the lesser of the two. There's definitely, if you think of big names that got a lot of commercial ex uh, success and exposure during the 1980s between thrash and speed metal, though it's gonna be the thrash metal bands, right? So what's interesting now is you look down the road where more and more traditional heavy metal bands are looking to sort of pull from the more obscure uh, artists from the 1980s. It, you look at bands that are pulling from, let's say, American power metal, another genre that wasn't given a lot of exposure in the early to mid 1980s. Um, now, they're all, there's tons of new bands pulling from those influences like Manila Road, Omen, Kirithungal, right? Ranger is a band that is very much looking at like Exciter and Agent Steel and Razor um, as primary influences. Bands that were still essential to die hard underground metalheads in the 1980s, but less sort of popular um, and definitely less commercially successful than the major bands within Thrash. So here we arrive with Ranger. Now a band that started or basically made their debut in 2009 um, out of Finland and uh, it was their 2013 release, uh, Nights of Darkness, that really put them on the scene. Um, while it was just an EP, this is the time when sort of tradition, more traditional heavy metal bands were sort of coming down to the forefront. And speed metal, while a peripheral sort of, or extension of that movement, is starting to ride that wave into popularity. With Knights of Darkness, Ranger sort of establishes themselves along with other bands like Vulture or Stalker, for example, that are playing in a true speed metal style and should, Essentially, fans should keep an eye out um, for what's coming in the future because they're getting it right. They're doing it right. They're doing some degree of justice to those major influences from the past. So since almost essentially a decade from that EP in 2013, we get Risen from the Ruins. And there's been a couple of full lengths and um, other EPs. Um, through the almost decade that separate their sort of seminal EP, to their newest release or offering here at the end of 2022. Uh, for those who don't know, it, the band at this point is really two, uh, 
primary members. So one is Demi Lamberg and Miko Spilla. For people who don't know, they're the sort of surviving members and they've had sort of a, a, a rotating cast or some additional guests through the years, but um, they're the major or primary driving forces behind this band. And what you notice immediately when this album starts, uh, the first track entitled, uh, it was the title track, I should say, Risen from the Ruins, within 30 seconds, you get that drenched sort of reverb 1980s speed metal guitar tone. Um, for those who, who don't know, uh, please go back and listen to uh, Exciter's Violence and Force. That's a great sort of reference um, for what you can expect on this record. If you love that sound, you're going to find it here almost immediately from Ranger. And once you know you get into that sound, the next thing you're going to piece, and which is really the beating heart of speed metal and this band by extension is that sort of chaotic we're playing at an incredible pace and hanging on barely by the skin of our teeth kind of sound speed metal there was something sort of fast and loose about the style of play there that separated itself from thrash and you can hear it on this record it's not necessarily sloppy per se but if you're looking for the precision that you commonly associate with thrash you won't find it here and that drives home this point that this is very much first and foremost a speed metal record um i have to say like for, for older fans i'm that may be appreciated for younger fans who are listening to this record and you're used to a little bit more clarity where you can sort of peer deeper into the sound of a record, um, it would seem like all this chaos is sort of the fire and between that reverb added in, it sort of veils or feels like a smoke, right? The fire, you can't really make out the fire because the smoke is sort of the veil in front of it, right? That's that sort of reverb effect. So if you were to listen to something like um, Skeptic's Apocalypse, for example, from uh, Agent Steel, right? In 1985, I, for older fans who probably picked that up in cassette and they threw it into their car and listened to it, I'm sure this production will, will completely get to you, right? It makes sense. But for younger fans who potentially romanticize about, like myself, what that must have sounded like, at least in the my imagination, this satisfies that sort of curiosity at least. Um, with all that sort of drenched reverb work, um, the leads do stand out. They did a great job sort of letting them sit, you know, right at the front of the mix, take center stage. And now having a decade, you know, plus of playing together, um, both, uh, I should say, it's, and they do share instruments, right? Like, I believe um, demi has got the vocals and guitar and bass, and Miko, I believe, is playing guitar and drums. Uh, but they both are guitarists, and it for that stands out on this record, meaning there's something complimentary about the guitar work. There's, they, they both can add their own ideas to the riffs and to the solos, and that sort of proves throughout this record. Um, when you get to a solo part, you can tell that they understand how a solo should relate to the riff that it should sort of leapt in front of, how it should sort of work in concert with it, and before descending back into the song, how to make that exit smoothly. So. There's great sort of transitions in and out during the course of the solos. It's not just chaos. They're well composed, there's proper phrasing, they're meaningful. So you don't just get sort of a blur of notes before falling back into the mix, right? You can tell they spent some time and I'm sure have mastered to some degree how they want their speed metal solos to sound. They got it here on this record. 
Um, after the guitars, like I said, that's the one instrument that they share. So the drums um, and the bass work here are played with actually a good amount of confidence and fluency. Um, if you had told me that this band is a four piece and not two musicians covering all the instruments, I would have believed you. Uh, it, not to say that they're played with the same level of sort of exceptional flair as the guitar work. Um, they seem to, to be like the second sort of focus or instrument here as a sort of a collective addition to the album. Uh, they don't stand out in the same way the guitars do, but they aren't a detraction and they aren't an afterthought. So probably when they sat down to compose this record, they knew they had it to play at a certain level to sort of match what was happening with the guitars. And you can find them doing that here with both bass and drums. Now, Dimmy's vocals, I have to say, um, if you're a John Cyrus fan, it's all over this record like that sort of speed metal to the sky where he sort of takes flight. Now, John had, I would say, a little bit more of a traditional heavy metal sort of falsetto, right? He, he can hold as much as that is sort of chaotic, high frequency energy. He can hold it in a certain way that I feel Dimmy is just sort of like letting it rip and hoping he knows where to go. It ends up sort of deal. Um, I do like that additional element though. It adds the sense of like energy and chaos that you want on a speed metal record. So uh, for fans who uh, are looking for those high falsetto crazy screams, you're gonna find them here. There's also a good amount of like sort of bark, um, which leads us to sort of the other side to this record, which is, it is, as I've mentioned, a pure speed metal first and foremost record. There's plenty of punk influence on this record as well. Um, they've talked about the influence that Discharge has uh, made on them and, and I know in interviews and uh, as a primary influence. With a title like Risen from the Ruins, um, this record thematically and lyrically is very much a sort of punk influenced speed metal record. If you look at like Abuse of Power is one of the titles here. So the lyrics read, Progressive face, conservative heart, devoted militarist. Peaceful in words, warmonger in deeds, a national chauvinist. Sanctions and walls, an aggressive peace, imperialist policy. Civilian deaths in the name of spreading democracy. Right, like this is a band that is not unapologetic about the kind of lyrics they're writing and are clearly focused on a far more political message than just having a good time. If you didn't catch that, or if that's not enough for you to sell you that this is a, sell you on the idea this is a political record, pigs, revolution, servant, all are commentary on sort of class and economic warfare that is happening, so to speak, within Finland. There's even this added element of, I know they took clips. Now I can't, I can't tell um, what is actually being said because it's in Finnish, right? But in the liner notes, it even lists that there are sort of these intro and outro pieces that have been directly pulled from um, the state-sponsored Finnish broadcasting company. So there are sort of, right, real life clips adding to sort of the overall character and uh, ambient nature of this record. So as the song sort of comes in and comes and fades out, it's almost like you're, you know, changing channels on the television and taking a glimpse into what's happening in the Finnish news, which once again, real life sort of consequences and political life that is made up in Finland. Um, that being said, so this Finnish character is gonna be an important uh, piece that I, I wanted to introduce here because this is really almost two records, meaning uh, if you can tell by the title, half the first eight songs are the exact same songs that are in Finnish, and then the other half of it, so to speak, is the exact same record all in English. Now, as a concept, I'm not really against that, against that idea, but anecdotally, when I was listening to this, I kind of had to be cognizant of when the Finnish side ended 
and the English side picked it up because you were listening to the exact same record twice um, accidentally. And I didn't want that to happen. And it always ended up detracting from a sense of finality, right? Like you want those eight songs to be absolute bangers and the record to finish and then you're done. Now, of course, you're saying like, Kellen, you can just go over and like skip the first eight songs and listen to the English side of the record. And while that's true, there is some sort of arbitrary, unnecessary desire that I have. I would have loved for this just to be one record, have a Finnish version, have an English version. Collectors, if they go crazy, can get both. Um, it, I know that's a minor gripe, but there were several times where I was just listening to this and it ended up sort of moving directly into the next sort of English side of it. And uh, I, I felt uh, to some degree it like shook me out of understanding how an album is supposed to flow, like how a track listing has a sense of like direction and end point. Um, just having one record bleed into the next kind of didn't work for me. Um, the other, I guess, major piece, as much as that's my arbitrary one, the next one that I would have to say is, if you were to ask me to name a single on this record, or a couple for that matter, that are like the most essential best songs here, um, I really couldn't do that for you. And you can say that's, kind of, that's a, a good side of the record, is that there's a lot of good songs, it's true, but for me, a great classic record needs a couple of like keystone pillars that the rest of the album can sort of build around. And this record didn't offer that. Um, I, I listened to it a, a bunch. Sometimes I listened to it twice when I only intended to listen to it once, but I got um, the impression that no one song really stood out in a way that made me immediately want to return to it. Now, I do think the back end of this record, meaning Servant, Pigs, Gorilla, um, which are tracks essentially four, five, and six, um, or if on the, that's on the English side, right? Um, they're my favorites but they don't quite reach the point of m making me feel like they are an absolute standout um, that I would want to offer up as a single. Maybe I'll get there, but I've listened to this a bunch over the past now month, and I haven't quite you know, arrived at a certain place where I would feel confident in doing so. And I think that holds this record back from sort of moving into a place where Ranger is a fully realized band, or they put out the record that can now sit in the canon of great speed metal records of all time, which is what our standard should be. I think Ranger has that potential. And the only reason I'm being critical of them as a band is because that's what I want from them ultimately. When I saw that there was a new Ranger full length, it was, if this had come out earlier in 2022, it probably would have been on my year end list. And that still would not satisfy sort of the level of expectation that I have on them. Um, in terms of speed metal bands right now that are playing in this sort of true, unapologetic speed metal style, Ranger's one of the best. And the only reason I'm being critical or I'm holding this kind of a standard up to them is because that's what I want from them. I think they're a band that has within the genre today some of the most promise and um, I hope that they get there. Maybe in the months to come after I pour over this some more, I'll find that song that really stands out. Um, but I think as of right now, one of the things that holds this record back is that it is missing one, two, absolutely knock out of the park, without question, classic speed metal songs to cement it. And then the rest of this album can build around there's a whole lot of guest vocals on here, there's, and there's plenty of new dimensions that they introduce. Worms, the track track number three, is kind of like an instrumental vocal song. So they're taking chances. They're they're making sort of taking a you know growing as a band, taking the opportunity to sort of expand their sound. Um, but they don't quite have keystone like absolute perfect speed metal songs to really nail this down to the floor and make it a classic record. Um, I really like 
if this, when I think on the conclusion, I'll say this. By no means is this in their third full length, has this record diminished the possibility for their fourth record to be the classic that I want them to make, right? So if, if you're thinking, Kellen, they've been around for a decade, this record's never gonna come, this record is proof of that, I would disagree with that sentiment. I think this is actually proof that they're heading in the right direction. Their fourth or fifth record may be the one they finally find to, to sort of cement them in the canon of speed metal as one of the important bands to ever do it. Um, this one is not that record, and that's what I want from them. Next time they come out, I'll be paying attention. I will swoop and pick it up that fast um, because I do think they have that kind of potential. And uh, I want to see sort of strong speed metal bands in 2023 and beyond. So thank you so much for watching. And I've got one more thing here for you before we bounce. So my shout out here goes out to a band called Isher or Isher. It is a one woman black metal project um, done by Lolita Art or Ardent. And it's entitled The Mystic Fields out on Ars Funebris Records. I think it's just been released so far on cassette. Um, but a one woman black metal project out of Ukraine. I've been really digging it. Um, please go check that out. Uh, if you have not already heard of Ranger and you want some speed metal, go check out um, their last release, Risen from the Ruins. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.